today's video we're going to be taking a look at the all new stack from Flywo. Now this is called the Goku stack. It's basically a 20 by 20 F7 stack, dual gyros, 9 volt regulator, 40 amp ESCs, that's rated up to 6S, and it's BLHeli32, which is pretty insane. This is the top spec of any 20 by 20 setup you could possibly want. It has just about everything, which is pretty crazy here. Also, the gyro is switchable, which we'll get into in a bit here. So let's take a look at the ESC before we jump into the flight controller. We've actually already seen a version of this flight controller. I had the pre-production model, and now this is the final release here. So the ESC here as itself is a 20 by 20 ESC with three millimeter holes, but can also be used on two millimeter holes. We'll get into that in a bit here. So it is a BL Holly 32, so you get the RPM filtering if you want. Using small FETs, and that's what we're starting to see a lot nowadays, especially on these 20 by 20 ESCs. We also see that they've, you know, took their time designing it because you can see the plus and the minus here that tells you where the leads would go for the battery. But not only that, these holes also are really great, especially when you're gonna be adding the low ESR capacitor, which is a must. I don't care who you are, it is a must. The minus side of the low ESR capacitor, which would be this pin, would go to the negative side, and the side that has nothing is always the positive, so it would go to this side. So you'd be able to insert those through the hole, and you'll have a pleasant time soldering the capacitor pins along with the battery wires. So that's nice into that perspective. We also do have one shot resistor, so you're not going to be getting separate current reading for each ESC, which again is unfortunate for all BLHeli32 ESCs that are being released into the market right now, which was one of basically the main features of the BLHeli32 back then. However, now we don't even see that. We don't even get a whiff of it anymore. Now also a really interesting design not design a really interesting decision i think they've made on this as you can see you have we have a little tiny heat sink here but i think this is mostly aesthetic more than anything because usually you'd want the heat sink on the fets down here these are the things that are gonna you know have all the current go through them basically to the motor and uh here it's just basically on the microcontroller units as well as the fet driver as well in here so it's it's like it's more of i think a design aspect than anything it'll help somewhat but overall this is where you want the heat dissipation to be on these guys right there because those are the uh, MOSFETs that's in charge of the power delivery down to your motors. Now, for filtration, looks pretty decent. Um, obviously, they do provide you with a Rubicon low ESR capacitor. It's a 470 microfarad 35 volt, which is really great, especially for 6S setups and as well as 4S setups. Now, let's push this guy to the side, but before pushing it to the side, we also see that we have our connector broken out. So if you didn't want to use a connector, you can direct solder to this here. And you could use also solder on the bottom side, which is also a nice addition here. Very thoughtful. Now, just quickly, some of the things they provide you with is going to be the connector that'll connect the flight controller to the ESC. And also a bunch of rubber O-rings and rubber dampeners and even long M3 screws and long M2 screws. Now, if we bring in the flight controller here, we see that the holes are slightly larger than usual. That's because you can add a rubber dampener in there to make it as an M2 screw. So like two millimeter hole, basically. Or you could use some of the rubber O-rings that are provided to keep it as a three millimeter hole setup. So it's up to you in that perspective. Uh, so they tried to stay flexible, but you're just limited in the way you can be flexible on these. Now, this flight controller is really interesting. This is one of the most feature-packed 20 by 20 flight controller I've seen till this day, other than one other, which was from Maytag. And that one has kind of slowly went under the radar. So what this flight controller provides is quite a lot. What it is, it's an F7 microcontroller unit. So it's the latest in processing power, especially in our hobby currently. It also has a dual camera input, which I'll show you how to set up as well. It has dual camera input. It also has something called a nine volt regulator which is really great for your video transmitter because it gives you a higher probability of cleaner footage down in your video feed because it just gives you stable voltage from a regulator instead of just using battery voltage. Not only that, it's also DJI ready. So DJI takes roughly, I think, 9 volts or 8 point something volts. So this will also be able to work great with a DJI Air unit. Not only that, you still have your on-screen display. You also have memory. You also have a proper 5 volt switching regulator, a proper 9 volt switching regulator. MPU 6000 gyro. We got tantalum capacitor for the on-screen display, which is really good. It helps um, avoid those nasty flickers that we don't really get to see that much anymore of nowadays. We also have a little barometer right here. So it is packed to the bone. And there's still enough UARTs broken out for you to do as you please. And if you take a closer look, you'll see these right there. 
And you'll see two holes in the middle of the board. Or actually, are they four? No, just two holes in the middle of the board. That is because this thing can run both a ICM and a MPU. The default built-in gyro is an MPU 6000 gyro, and uh, which is the one we really want now. Since we're capped at 8K in beta flight, there's no need for the ICM gyro. However, you can buy this with both gyros, but it will increase the overall stack height because you'll have a little box up here that's holding that gyro and you'll be able to choose in beta flight which gyro do you want to use. So if you feel confident, you really want to be able to run that ICM gyro, then you can go ahead and do that. If not, just stick to MPU 6000 gyro. It's just less headache and it just works most of the time without much filtration and should get you going, especially if you're new. Now, if you're more experienced, you have many routes to go, and I don't need to tell you those routes because I'm pretty sure you already know what you're looking at. So let's go ahead and cover the connection setup. We're gonna cover uh, receiver setups, whether you have SBUS or IBUS, which is FlySky or FRSky, uh, the video transmitter part, and also the camera, and that's really it because the ESC connections and the power is all basically routed through this cable right here, which will connect these two to sides, and you're basically good to go. So when you're going to install both of these in your quadcopter, you need to make sure you install them in the correct way, or your quadcopter will never fly unless you know what you're doing. So the ESC would obviously usually most of the time be under the flight controller and that should be set up like this where the camera is up here in the front and this is how it should be installed because if you, if you take a closer look you'll see M1, M2, M3, M4. This is the motor orientation that's supposed to be set up into default beta flight setups. Motor 1, 2, 3, 4 and that's what we see here. 1, 2, 3, 4. So this is how the ESC would be set up. Now your flight controller is going to be set up like this where the connector would actually be the opposite way of that one. So the USB would be on the left, the connector would be here in the back and they do provide you with a long enough connector so you can have that set up. So the flight controller is supposed to be set up like this in your quadcopter again and the camera would be up here. So now let's start with the video transmitter connection. So how would we set that up? Now again, I mentioned earlier this thing has a 9 volt regulator which is amazing. It's really great always when I see a 9 volt regulator on any sort of flight controller because it just reduces uh, the possibility of any noise going into your video feed, thus hindering your flying performance or, or visually impairing you. Now here up on the left we have the ground for the video transmitter which would be the black wire. The second wire over would be the red wire which is going to be the 9 volt. Now if you had a video transmitter that only takes 5 volt, you don't want to put it here or you'll fry it. So if you have a battery voltage video transmitter that takes 7 to 26 or 7 to 35 volts, this is where you want to put the red wire. Next over we have the video out which is going to be the yellow wire. So this would be the yellow wire for your video transmitter. So UART5 will be set up for smart audio or any sort of smart audio protocol that allow you to change the channels uh, through the on-screen display here. So if you don't know what that is, you could just completely ignore the last one and never worry about it until you're ready for that stage. So on the right side here, we have all of the camera options. So this is where it gets also really interesting. Now, since it takes two camera inputs, you can actually change between camera inputs, uh, which is pretty crazy. And I really like that. And it's all due to this little tiny, tiny, tiny little IC right here, uh, which is pretty interesting as well, I find. Here we have, we'll start off with the ground. Now, the ground, which is the black wire, would go here. And again, if you're using two camera options, which I'll explain right here in a bit, what you'd want to do is both of those cameras, black wires, put them together and put the black wires right there on this pad. Next over is going to be 5 volts, which is going to be the red wire for the cameras. I would take, if I was going to set up two cameras, I would take both of the red wires, wrap them together, solder on, put solder on them, and then solder them right here. Next over, we have the yellow wires. So here would be camera one, which is default by camera one. So I'd get the first yellow wire that I want to be the default camera. I would set that up. And the second camera, I would put it here. Now, if you don't want to use the second camera, you don't have to worry about anything. Just install your yellow wire here and ignore this one. This last one right here is called camera control, which will control your camera's on-screen uh, display, basically. It's a separate on-screen display for settings uh, that some cameras do have. And you can set that OSD wire right there, and you'll be able to control it through the beta flight. So now we're going to cover the receiver part, which is really great. Now on F7 microcontroller units, such as this one here, you can basically place the signal wire anywhere well, in, on any RX pad and you'll be good to go, which is something really great here. So for example, we have a FR Sky S bus uh, receiver. The way you'd want to set that up is we would have the black wire go here, which is ground. 
and the red wire hero. Now we have power basically for any receiver that takes five volts. So these two would be it. First one ground, second one is the five volt, which would be the red wire. Next, you want to go down here, which is RX1. That is by default, I think, what's set up uh, already in the beta flight with the firmware here to run on the re any receiver you want. You just have to choose the protocol, whether it's uh, S bus, I bus, or anything else. So you'd want to set that up on RX1, which would be UART1. And um, yeah, and we still have plenty of other UARTs here. If we move down uh, from here, we have uh, TX2 and RX2, which is UART2, and then we also have UART3, and then we also have UART4. We also have I2C protocol pads here for some sort of GPS and telemetry stuff. We also have another 5 volt in ground right here. We also have a dedicated RSSI pad if you needed that for something, which is uh, very useful. The connector here will take care of all of the connections between the ESC power and telemetry and all these things uh, between the ESC and the flight controller. So that's going to just cut down time quite dramatically. So you should basically definitely pick this up with its own ESC and just make your life a lot easier. Now on the bottom here, we see that under the connector, we see that we have uh, broken out some pads. However, now do not get confused because these pads have nothing to do with the connections that are from the connector. So it's not like this right here. This is completely different connections here. And what these provide here is we have a couple things going on for us. We have our LED buzzer and our current sensor in, even a motor five and a motor six output, which we could reroute to anything else. So uh, let's quickly go ahead and cover this. So we have ground five volt, and we have our LED data signal pin. So if you had an you know, RGB LED, there's usually three wires, a black, a red, and some other color, which would be the signal. So you would wanna set this up where the ground would go to the black, the red would go to the five volt, and the signal is gonna go to this one. This one can only be used for LED signal, but you could reroute it if you know what you're doing. Now, this one here is going to be the buzzer ground. Keep that in mind, buzzer minus. So the buzzer minus would be the fourth over, and then the buzzer positive, you'd wanna go take it from the five volt, which would be the second pad from the left here. And that's how you'd set up a buzzer here. Next, after that, what we have, which is this right here, is going to be our current sensor in, which you really don't have to do anything with because uh, basically the connector is doing all that stuff for us. Uh, so it's probably shared within that connector as well, but it doesn't really matter. And here we have motors five and six, which we could do whatever the hell you want with. You want to add six motors, you could do that. Build a hexacopter, or you could reroute them to do anything else. Or if you damage the pad, you could reroute it to uh, do something else as well, which again is really, really awesome here. And well, that's gonna conclude it for this video, guys. Make sure you come join my Patreon. I have a ton of these things up for giveaways uh, from a lot of different companies at the end of every month. And and also, everything is linked down below. So if you wanna go ahead and check those out, those are great support channel as well. And I'll see you in the next one, guys. Peace out.